Grace, mercy, and peace be yours in abundance from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Words for our consideration are words you heard a few moments ago from Isaiah chapter 25. Permit me to reread verse 6. On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats, and the finest of wines. The word of the Lord. When you hear these words, it's party time. I'm guessing many of you immediately start to think about life's memorable events that would cause us to have a celebration. Maybe it's a birthday party. Maybe it's party time to celebrate some good news. Maybe you're getting engaged. Maybe you're celebrating in addition to your family. Maybe you're celebrating a pay raise or a promotion. Maybe it's graduating from one grade, one school on to the next. It could be even just celebrating something personally or professionally. And for those of you who are football fans, I would imagine that when you hear it's party time, you're thinking about those good old days when Rodgers and Nelson hook up for that go-ahead game-winning touchdown. Isaiah also talks about a party in the 25th chapter that God inspired him to write. And I got to be honest, the party that Isaiah talks about is the party to top all parties. In fact, it's what Isaiah tells us that not only adds a greater amount of joy to any and every moment that we celebrate in life now, But it's the mother of all parties because God promises that he has dealt with anything and everything that could be a party crasher in your life. And that one day it will never be, those things will never be a part of your life. And that gives us a reason to celebrate. But in the meantime, you and I are well aware that that unwanted guest is going to visit the beautiful Savior family. That unwanted guest, known as death, is going to pay a visit. And when it happens, we will gather together as a family of believers, gather together with the friends and family of those who lost a loved one. And we will look to God's word for comfort and encouragement. Because there's no doubt that when death strikes, it makes a profound impact on those who are still left surviving. They're now left dealing with the sadness, the loneliness, the grief, and the heartache. That's why none of us want to think about that topic of death. None of us want to have to go through that pain of separation and loss. And maybe one of the greatest reasons is that when death comes, it causes all of us to think again of our own mortality. Because the truth is, sooner or later, death is going to come knocking on my door. And death is going to come knocking on your door. And there isn't much consolation for us to know that death only visits those who deserve it. Scripture speaks loud and clear to that. Paul, in writing to the Romans, reminds us, for the wages of sin is death. If we thought that we had any hope or any chance of escaping this unwanted visitor, all we need to do is look at our hearts and lives. 
It's that grudge that I refuse to let go. It's that hateful thought, that lustful thought. Maybe it's that bitterness you're still holding against God because he hasn't answered all your prayers in the way that you think he should. The truth is, as we look deeper and deeper into our lives, we come to this bone-chilling realization that sin is there, unmistakably and unavoidably there. And so when death comes, we know that we too deserve it. But wait a second, Pastor. I thought that you said our worship theme this morning was it's party time. And you're here talking to us about one of the most difficult topics, and that's death. Boy, you sure know how to kill a party. The truth is, friends, it is our sins that lead to death that has crashed the party. Isaiah talks about it this way, that it is the shroud that enfolds all people, the sheet that covers all nations. Death plays no favorites. And the reality is, for you and I, that death is on the horizon. Which leads us to ask the question, is death the ultimate party crasher? There are thousands and thousands of dollars that go to funding medical research to try to come up with an answer for staving off death. People make all sorts of lifestyle changes hoping that they will prolong their lifespan. But what's the reality? All those still end up with people standing face to face with death. Perhaps you're here this morning because death has struck close to home. And you're looking for a word of comfort or encouragement. Maybe you've just received some news that is a reminder that death may be much closer than you were hoping. So what's the verdict? Is death the ultimate party crasher? Isaiah helps answer that question for us. In fact, Isaiah has a bold declaration to answer that question. And the answer to that question is unequivocally, no, death is not the ultimate party crasher. In fact, death for a child of God cannot be a party crasher because God himself has made you a promise. God says that he has swallowed up death forever. Just how did that happen? The only way for God to take the fear and the sting and the pain out of your death and mine was to face death himself. And that's exactly what our God has done for us. Over 700 years after Isaiah penned these encouraging party words, God the Son came into this world. And it was God the Son who took upon my shroud of sin that fear of death, he put it on his shoulders. And then he carried it on his shoulders to that cross where he bled and died because of my sins 
because of your sins. He gave up his life in death, and he took them to the grave. But the story doesn't end there. Because the only way for God to assure you that death has been defeated, that it has been swallowed up forevermore, is that three days later, Jesus rose victorious. And that changes your life and mine forever. Because you and I are connected to him through faith. And so God promises you that because he has conquered sin, because he has conquered death, so also you will. Paul, in writing to the Corinthians, says, Where, O death, is your sting? Where, O death, is your victory? They're gone because of what Jesus Christ has done. You see, God made that promise to you in the waters of holy baptism, when he placed his name on you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. There you were connected to Christ's death, life, and his glorious resurrection. And you know what that means? That means that if sin could not hold Christ in the grave, if death could not hold him in the grave, then neither can it hold you in the grave. You know what that means, friends? That we have a party to celebrate. That's the celebration Isaiah was talking about. That's the reason we're celebrating this morning. Because we have a God who loves us so dearly that he would come into this world. He would live a perfect life. He would die an innocent death and he would conquer everything that would cause us fear and worry and anxiety. After all, that's what our worship services are, aren't they? They're little parties, little celebrations, little reminders of that great party that is to come. So when we gather for worship, we sing songs of thanksgiving. When we come to worship, we celebrate a feast. We call it the Lord's Supper, where God feeds us with his true body and blood in, with, and under the bread and wine a reminder of his love and his forgiveness to us. There's a reason for us to celebrate. If you're here this morning and you're struggling to hold back those tears, tears from pain, tears from worry, Tears from sadness. Tears from loneliness. Then you've come to the right place. You've come to meet your triune God face to face. And to hear him promise you what lies ahead for you. And knowing what is coming. That puts everything into alignment. That puts everything into a proper perspective. That's what gives us the courage and the strength and the encouragement to face those tears of today and those life events that will cause us tears tomorrow. Because God has promised that the day is coming when he will wipe every single tear from your eye. When he will welcome you to that mother of all parties. When you will be a part of the feast he is preparing. 
that doesn't mean that all of the sudden my pains disappear. That doesn't mean that the sadness completely goes away. But we have God's promise. We have God's strength that will get us through. And a promise that at the end of our days, we will feast forevermore with the one who has loved us with an everlasting love. And I got to tell you, I can't wait. I can't wait to sing with the choirs in heaven. This is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. I can't wait to the day I meet my Savior face to face and I can loudly proclaim it's party time. Thanks be to God. May we pray. Gracious Lord, how good it is for us to be here to celebrate what you have done through the death and resurrection of Christ for us. While we are tempted to fear the day that we will close our eyes in death, lead us back to Christ's empty tomb where we are reminded that he has removed the sting and fear of death forevermore. Keep us steadfast until the day we feast with you and all your saints in glory everlasting. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please stand. We now continue with our thanks for God speaking to us.